Wow, Hara, and many are asking how could this type of accident happen in the first place and questioning what type of protocols are in place to keep cast and crew safe. Fox 5's Brielle Thomas said here now with more on that part of the story. Briella. Hey there, Steve. Well, as you know, the goal of the movie and the TV industry is to make scenes look more realistic, but as experts explain to us when it comes to prop guns, well, they don't just look dangerous, they can be deadly if the right safety precautions aren't first put into place. Christian Kelly Sordelet is a professional fight director and stunt coordinator for Broadway movie and TV productions. He's also been working with prop guns for decades and walked Fox 5 through some of the standardized safety precautions for using them on set, including a safety brief with cast and crew members. There really should be no live rounds anywhere close to set, anywhere on set at all. Prop guns can range from a completely fake firearm to an actual working gun that fires blanks or cartridges that generate a flash followed by a loud bang. A rule of thumb making sure nobody is nearby when the gun is fired. It still has an explosive energy that comes out of it and it still is designed to fire projectiles. According to a 2016 write-up by the Associated Press, there have been at least 194 serious TV and film set accidents in the United States from 1990 to 2014 and at least 43 deaths. In the meantime, on set accidents that happened internationally between 2000 and 2016 have resulted in at least 37 deaths. Accidents happen in a lot of varieties of ways, so it's not just stunts or it's not just when, you know, we are bringing in you know, weaponized props. In July 1982, actor Vic Morrow was killed during a helicopter crash while working on the set of the Twilight Zone movie. In March 1993, martial arts star Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, died during filming of The Crow after being shot at with a gun that was supposed to fire blank cartridges. And in February 2014, camera assistant Sarah Jones was fatally struck by a train on the set of the independent film Midnight Rider in Georgia. In a way, I feel like uh, just reliving Sarah's death and uh, I, I, I just, I mean, it's such a huge setback. There's obviously so much that needs to be done in the film industry. And Richard Jones, who you just heard from there, created the Sarah Jones Foundation to honor the legacy of his 27-year-old daughter. The foundation coming up with initiatives to boost onset safety and promoting the need for greater industry precautions. Steve. Wow, hard. Thanks, Brielle.